I am finally reviewing the Insta360 ONE R. And I'm mainly gonna be talking about the features of the ONE R, things that I like, things that I don't like, and I'll be comparing the ONE R to the GoPro Hero 8 Black and the GoPro Max, kind of the most familiar cameras that most people kind of know and have a reference point for. I could bring in the the DJI Osmo Action because they have done a ton of work on their firmware and app and the whole experience with this camera has gotten significantly better, but I'm gonna save that for another video, an update video on this camera coming soon. For now though, we're gonna focus on these two cameras, three cameras, three and a half. And this video has been a doozy comparing the different mods to the Hero 8 Black and the Max, comparing them, lining them up in post, doing all that. So hit that like button because it's your way of saying, hey David, thanks for doing all that tedious work so I don't have to. And hit subscribe and join the now 60,000 subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. I've seen you sharing these videos out like crazy. May 4th, this channel hit 50,000 subscribers. It's now May 19th and we're at 60,000 subscribers. You guys are legends. I'm gonna just keep making these videos. You guys keep sharing them out and we'll keep growing. All right, so a review on this camera. We're gonna compare it to these cameras and I'm gonna end with my dream action camera setup. I've been thinking about it a lot and I know what my dream action camera would be. And one of these cameras is close, but not there just yet. Okay, starting off, let's just jump into price. The Insta360 has multiple setups, multiple ways that you can actually order this camera. The first and most basic way is the 4K mod, just a 4K camera coming in at $299. Very comparable to the GoPro Hero 8 Black, which is now $299. But then you can switch up the mods and now you have a 360 camera with a screen for 429. Or you can buy the 360 camera and the 4K mod in their twin edition for 479. Or if you're looking for a camera with a one inch sensor, you can up your game and get their new Leica 5.3K one inch sensor mod for 549. Or you can buy the expert edition, which is this setup here with the one inch sensor and the 360 mod for 729. So in price alone, you save quite a bit by going the Insta360 route. Even if you don't want this 5.3K one inch sensor beast of a mod, you could just do the 4K mod with the 360 mod. That gives you both those options for 479. Whereas with the GoPros, this guy is 300 and this guy is 500. So to have a 4K camera and a 360 camera in the GoPro world, $800 and over here it's $479. Now of course with this you have two cameras. You're shooting two different angles potentially at once and over here you have to choose do I want to have a 360 camera right now or do I want to have a 4K camera right now. But if price doesn't matter to you, if you're just saying hey I just want to know what's best, what camera out there can I go buy, money doesn't matter, what's best. Let's dig a little bit deeper and see if the 1R can compare to the king of action cameras with the GoPro. And the very first setup that I think is really easy to dig into is the 4K mod setup because this is just like a GoPro Hero 8 Black. The most obvious difference is their physical form. The GoPro Hero 8 Black has a large rear screen and a small front screen that can just display info. While the Insta360 ONE R is, is a modular camera, this whole bottom bit is the battery. The screen can be rear facing or forward facing, although it is a much smaller screen. It is nice that it can do both. You can flip it around and boom, now I can see myself and vlog this way. But then again, if you turn it back around, now you can't see anything facing the other way. And again, not to muddy the waters here, but the Osmo Action has a very large rear screen and a pretty big front screen where you can actually play video. So it has both front and rear screen. So I'd love to see GoPro just copy the Osmo Action and put a front screen on there where we can actually see a video feed. And I'd love to see Insta360 ONE R have a core mod in the future that has a front screen and a rear screen. And while they're at it, while they're switching up the core mod, I'd love to see a different side door. The side door that houses the USB-C port and the micro SD card, it's, it's terrible. This door is the death of me, especially when it's in the cage. When it's in the cage, it is almost impossible to open up. It's bad. So new core mod, front screen and rear screen, please, and a different side door. 
Thank you. And lastly, the 1R has a replaceable, removable, user replaceable lens cover. So this lens cover, oh, it's on there, good. This one does pop off. If it breaks, I can pop that thing off. I can slap a new one on there, super easy. GoPro, what the hell? I'm still so annoyed that GoPro went with a non-user replaceable screen because Screens get cracked all the time. And the last thing physically to look at is the size factor. The 1R is a little bit bigger. They're pretty similar in size. They are, they're kind of similar in weight. The GoPro weighs in at 104 grams while the 1R weighs in at 121 grams. Now, that doesn't sound super significant, but the 1R can't mount without the cage. So adding, so adding in the cage, we are now at 162 grams. So 104 grams versus 162 grams. A bit of a weight difference there. And again, the GoPro has those nice flip down feet right there. And the 1R needs to be inside this cage to be able to have those feet on there so you can mount it to something. And now when you put those two next to each other, the 1R is significantly bigger than the GoPro Hero 8 Black. So if size makes a difference, the GoPro is pocketable while this is still a small camera. And the video quality out of this mod is really good. Compared to the GoPro, I would say that GoPro has a bit of an edge, but it's not much. I think if you looked at the side-by-side -side footage between the two, you would see the difference. But I think if you just looked at 1R footage, you'd look at it and you'd just go, yeah, that's, that's GoPro footage. In the frame rate category though, the GoPro does have an edge. The 1R can match the GoPro at 4K 60, but while the 1R drops down to 100 frames a second at 2.7K, the GoPro can do 120 frames. And in 1080, the 1R can only do 200 frames a second, while the GoPro can do 240 frames a second. And in those slow motion frame rates, the GoPro retains a ton of quality and detail in the image, while the 1R loses quite a bit of quality. You can really see it in things like the palm trees when you zoom in. I'm not sure if that's something that Insta360 could fix with a firmware update, but I would love to see this camera match the frame rates of the Hero 8 Black. On the stabilization front, I think it's the same. GoPro's HyperSmooth 2.0, it's just so good. Insta360's flow state stabilization though is getting better and better with firmware updates and I think side by side, it'd be hard to pick which one is which, but again, HyperSmooth has a slight edge. Next up, let's look at audio quality. I did some side-by-side -side testing. I turned the wind reduction totally off on both cameras. Then I recorded myself not moving with no wind and then moving with lots of wind. Okay, this is both cameras. The wind reduction is turned off on both cameras. GoPro audio test, how does the GoPro sound? And Insta360 1R audio test, how does the audio sound? I'm not moving, there's no wind going. We're gonna get moving though and hear how both do without digital wind reduction. All right. Well, pretty quick here. We got a good bit of wind background, skateboard noise. There's a lot going on. I feel like both of these cameras are probably gonna struggle pretty hard in this situation without any sort of wind reduction mode. Here's a GoPro Hero 8 Black, no wind reduction in wind test. And here's an Insta360 1R. No wind reduction, but in the wind test. How do, uh, how do they sound? I think both cameras sound decent when not moving. I think the GoPro has a bit of an edge. It sounds a little bit more natural. And then while moving, they both sound like hot garbage. Again though, this is no wind reduction from either camera, so they're doing nothing to try to prevent that. Next up though, I turned the 1R's voice boost mode on, and I turned the Hero 8 Black's wind reduction mode on. Okay, now this is no movement, no real wind going on, but this is the Insta 1R in voice boost mode, and this is the GoPro with wind reduction on. I'm not gonna do the auto, I'm just gonna make it on, and uh, let's hear how they sound. Can you get going here?
with voice boost mode on, how does the Insta360 1R sound in the wind? Wow, it is, it is very windy. GoPro, audio test. Insta360, audio test. Ah. And again, while not moving, I think the GoPro sounds a bit more natural, but while moving, the GoPro sounds terrible, whereas the 1R has that voice boost mode. It's doing a ton of processing to try to cancel out that wind noise and really focus on my voice. And while I think it does a good job of it, it's a bit heavy handed. I almost wish there was like a dial in there, maybe one to five, I could go in and I could set how much of that effect I want. And then there's even a heavier handed effect called fast action on the 1R, and that is like, Super, super processed. Okay, and here's the last mode where the Insta360 1R is in a fast action mode, which just means that it's doing a ton to reduce wind and background noise, things like that. And again, it works to cut out a lot of that and focus on my voice, but really heavy handed now. Then lastly for the audio test, I went out by the fountain by our house, which just does a ton of background noise. That's a ton of noise for a camera to try to process and try to focus in on my voice. And again, the GoPro just didn't do very good at it. It really picked up all the background noise. It was all there. And the 1R did a good job. It really did focus on my voice, but again, really heavy handed with that effect. I wish I could dial it down just a little bit. All right, this is one of the harder audio tests that we could possibly do. This is with a giant fountain right behind me. Tons of background noise going on. How well do these two cameras pick up on just my voice? The GoPro Hearway Black, here is an audio test of the GoPro Hearway Black. There's a giant fountain behind me. And lastly, the one major difference between these two cameras is that the GoPro is filming directly to an MP4 format, while the 1R by default is set to film to an INSV format. And this format has pros and cons. With an MP4 file, whatever settings you dial into the camera are baked in. You can't change anything in post. What you shoot is what you get. But with the INSV file, you actually pull that file into either their mobile app or into their desktop studio app, and there's a lot of latitude on what you can do in post. You can change the framing of the shot, you can change the angle of the lens. So you might've filmed something in narrow lens, but in post you were like, I wish that was wider. You can just make it wider. You can change the coloring mode that it was in, and you can change the sound. You can turn on that voice boost, you can turn it off, you can turn on the background fast action mode, or you can turn that off also. Really cool to have that flexibility, but what's the downside of an INSV file? Well, the main downside is that any file you shoot with this camera has to go either through the mobile app or the desktop studio app, so you can make any changes that you might wanna make, or even if you don't wanna make changes, you still have to bring it through that process, then export those files as an MP4 format, and then be able to pull those into something like Premiere and start making your video. So it's another process in your workflow. It takes a lot of time, and honestly, it's a bit tedious. And Insta360 responded to that process by a new firmware update that now lets you switch this camera into MP4 mode. So it will film a 4K file straight to MP4 that you could pull into Premiere, but you then lose all that ability to edit in their app later and you lose their flow state stabilization. It switches down to this kind of basic stabilization mode. So pros and cons. I wish there was a way I could record INSV files and MP4 files at the same time or maybe an MP4 file but the INSV file was like the additional information between the MP4 file and the extra one. Then in post, I would have the option to either just pull the MP4 files in, start editing, or if I had a clip and I was like, oh, that one I didn't want to change, just pull that one clip into their app, do the changes, then re-export it as an MP4 file, then I can start working. I realized that would take up a ton of space on the SD card and probably the processor. It's probably not very realistic. So after all of that said, just for the 4K mods, if the GoPro is the standard at 100, the 1R I would say is about a 95. The GoPro edges it out with a larger and easier to use touch screen, although it doesn't flip forward. I think a GoPro has a little bit better video quality, especially at those higher frame rates, a little bit better stabilization and and a good bit better audio quality. Unless you're going really fast and you wanna hear your voice, in which case the voice boost on this guy is the better in audio quality. But the 1R is modular, so it's a 4K camera, but it can also be 
a 360 camera. By just swapping out that 4K mod, dropping in the 360 mod, I now have a 360 camera. Same cage, same batteries, new camera. And a quick comparison with the GoPro Max, and the main thing is the 1R can do 5.7K at up to 30 frames a second, 4K at up to 50 frames per second, and 3K at 100 frames per second. While the GoPro Max could only do 30 frames per second before, but a new firmware update now allows it to do 3K at 60 frames a second. So the 1R can do 3K at 100 frames a second, while this guy can only do 60. And for that reason alone, I really haven't reached for my GoPro Max very often recently. I've pretty much just been grabbing the 1R. Before, I would grab the Max because it was waterproof, but but now the 1R is also waterproof. So recently I haven't really had a reason to grab the GoPro Max, except to compare it against other 360 cameras that are newer and better. In the video quality category, the 1R has a huge advantage. I think the quality coming out of this camera is much better, has more dynamic range, retains a lot more detail in the shadow than the GoPro Max. As for audio quality, there's no microphones on the lens mod portion of the 1R. The microphones are actually on the core mod, so it doesn't matter which camera lens you swap out, the audio will always be the same on this camera. Whereas the GoPro Max has massive microphones on the front and the back, some microphones on top. It does an insane job with audio, way better than the GoPro Hero 8 Black, and much better than the 1R. So in audio quality alone, the Max wins. In video quality, the 1R wins. But when recording 360 video, how often do you need great audio? You, you really want great video. But the GoPro Max does have one feature that alone makes it worth grabbing, and that's hero mode. On the GoPro Max, I can flip it to be shooting out of one lens. It's now just recording like a normal GoPro, filming straight to an MP4 format, and I can flip that lens from the front lens to the rear lens so I could be vlogging with it or I could flip it around that way and now the screen's on the back. It's kind of amazing. Except that in hero mode it only goes up to 1080 60 frames per second and I've compared the 1080 60 frames per second on this camera to the 1080 60 frames per second on this camera and this one's way better. So it does hero mode. I love that but it's the quality is not great. So 360 versus 360 which would I take? While I do love the GoPro Max's large rear screen that's super easy to use, the 1R has a much smaller screen. Overall, I would take the 1R. I like the slow-mo better. I like the coloring and the detail that this retains. And in general, with the app experience, this is just a better 360 experience. Because another huge thing that happened with this camera was a firmware update. And that firmware update made it so that I could actually edit and reframe my footage while the files are still on the camera. See, before with this camera and, and still with this camera, I would go out and I would shoot my video. I'd then have to download those files to the app or to my computer. Then I would have to do all the reframing. Then I could export it as an MP4 file. Then I could bring it into Premiere and start editing my video. And now on the 1R, I can go out, I can shoot my footage from the camera. I can actually do all my reframing in the app. Then I can export that directly to my phone or computer and start editing right away. So it takes out a whole step in the 360 workflow. This feels like something GoPro could duplicate with a firmware update. But for now, the 1R is my 360 camera. Okay, last up is the 5.3K one inch mod. And wow, this thing is good. There will be a whole separate video specifically on this mod because this versus this, I can say right out of the bat, this is better. At 5.3K and a one inch sensor, it is better in low light and just has more detail in the normal image. And again, there will be a whole video comparing these two. Because there's some caveats to the statement of this being a significantly better camera. So keep an eye out for that video. I'll go way more in detail, show a lot more side-by-side -side footage. But keep in mind, at this point, we're looking at a $299 camera versus a $549 camera. So a significant difference in price, this one better be better. The audio quality though does not change because again, the microphones are on the core mod, not on the 5.3K mod. So I do think the GoPro edges out even this setup a little bit in the audio category. So with all of that said, which, which camera should you buy? Great question. If you wanna shoot two cameras at the same time, GoPro's the way to go. If audio quality straight out of the camera is the most important thing to you, still probably GoPro. But in legit every other scenario, 
This system is so impressive and for $320 cheaper than the comparable GoPro system. The 4K mod is nearly as good as the Hero 8 Black, the 360 mod is better than the GoPro Max, and the 5.3K mod is it's just insane. And the Insta360 is a bit of a moving target. They are updating their firmware all the time, whereas GoPro is a little bit slower to do that. It's kind of that old metaphor of a larger ship takes longer to turn. And who knows what other mods Insta360 is gonna come out with for the One R. I've already seen the Mavic mod where it's two lenses, one on top of the drone and one on the bottom of the drone. I'm super excited to try that out. And then whatever else, Insta360 can dream up. They could really do a lot with this camera, including swapping out the core mod, then you still have the same lenses, you still have the same batteries. It's almost like an interchangeable lens camera action camera. And finally, what is my dream action camera? If I could have any action camera in the world built for me, what would it look like? First off, it would for sure be a 360 cam. I love the ability, the angles, the creativity that you can do with a 360 cam. I just think it's better. But in my dream world, it's something that looks a lot like the GoPro Max, but maybe something that could do 8K so that when I reframe, it could still be like 2.7K, but then it could go into a hero mode where it could do 4K 60, 2.7K, 120 frames a second, and 1080 at 240 frames a second. So really what I wanna see is GoPro take these two cameras and just mash them together because this camera has such good video quality and this camera has such good audio quality, but neither of them share those features back and forth. Or Insta360, do the same thing. Give me a new mod. Give me a 360 mod that could do 8K maybe? 8K at 30 frames a second. It could do reframed 4K at 60 frames a second, reframed 2.7K at 120, and reframed 1080 at 240 frames a second. That would actually be my perfect camera. So I don't care who makes it, GoPro, or Insta360, or maybe, or maybe DJI will jump into the 360 world this year with a contender for all of these cameras, and they'll just, they'll make my dream camera the first go around. Whoever makes it though, that's that would be my dream camera. Let me know your guys' thoughts though. Which camera system would you go for? That's, that's not an option. Would you go for the Insta360 ONE R camera system or would you buy two GoPros to accomplish the same thing, be able to have two different angles? Which one of these two gets you most excited? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna be doing a ton more testing with all of these cameras as firmware updates continue on and every camera manufacturer keeps coming out with new firmware updates and new features. I'll get them tested. I'll make the videos. You guys hit the like button, subscribe and share with your friends. Seems like a good deal. Okay, I think that's it for today. I'll see you guys later.